This week, a controversial vote will take place on a bill which would legalize marijuana in New Hampshire for recreational use. Well, the New Hampshire House of Representatives has approved a bill to legalize marijuana in the Granite State. Supporters say it's long overdue. The New Hampshire House is set to vote on a bill allowing for the recreational possession of up to an ounce of pot to be sold and taxed to the licensed retailer. Support for decriminalizing the possession of small amounts of marijuana is reaching new heights in the New Hampshire House. Last week, New Hampshire's House passed a bill legalizing up to one ounce of marijuana for anyone over 21. Six times now in its history, the New Hampshire House has voted to decriminalize small amounts of marijuana, but never by such a landslide margin. When it comes to the marijuana debate in New Hampshire, Governor Maggie Hassan is drawing a line in the sand. Less than six months after signing a bill to allow the use of the drug, for the seriously ill. Currently, possession of marijuana is a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in prison and a fine of up to $2,000. Every other state in New England has taken steps to reduce penalties related to cannabis, except New Hampshire. But I don't support the decriminalization of marijuana any further, and I would veto it if it came to my death. At the heart of New England is New Hampshire, the state that proudly boasts the motto, live free, or die, often known as the Granite State, with a culture of independence and love that acts as a foundation to its 1.3 million residents. New Hampshire is a reflection of how a prosperous America should be. Within this state, there has been an issue stemming from whether or not cannabis should be legalized. Many activists want the personal freedoms that come with ending prohibition. The ability to grow, consume, and purchase cannabis has been an ongoing issue for those who can see the value and benefits in its use. 73% of residents want full legalization. 64% at least want cannabis decriminalized. Many believe in the values of limiting government while giving people the right to choose. Others see the opportunities that can come of the cannabis industry. The New Hampshire House of Representatives was the first elect body in the United States to pass a cannabis decriminalization bill. The bill was passed a total of eight times in the state house, only to be vowed to be vetoed by Governor Hassan. The commitment to legalization has grown and spread to many. Devoted activists with their efforts have inspired a community of love and unity. The strides that many have made in order for New Hampshire to obtain cannabis legally has spread across the Granite State and helped provide an alternative to Big Pharma. All of this while promoting a positive atmosphere that brings many together. The love and energy surrounding New Hampshire gives many the hope to one day utilize cannabis for all of its beneficial properties. Lives are intertwining in a culture of love, independence, and freedom is born. This is Image Gun and pro, pro coffee. coffee. You can find all of our contents at rebelloveshow.com. I am Ram Mathias. And I am the Rebel Mistress. This was my first music festival that I had ever went to. Uh, so that's super exciting. And we have the creators here in this room. And uh, we have Rick Naya and Thomas Brown. How's it going, Hi, how are you guys doing? Did you have an interesting weekend as well? <laughs> we had a great weekend, thank you. And uh, we're really happy to be here. Uh, how did it come to be all that jazz? Well, for the majority of my life, um, I've always been a vendor, and I've always had my own handmade jewelry, and I've, I've vended across the country, and I've been to um, hundreds of festivals. And I always wanted to do a hemp fest in New Hampshire because New Hampshire, out of all the New England states, has the toughest laws for marijuana and marijuana possession. And I said, said to myself, if I could change the laws in New Hampshire, maybe the rest of the nation would fall. And uh, I decided three years ago, to take my life savings and uh, do a concert, do a hemp fest in New Hampshire for legalization. Oh, wow. That's a rash decision. You're like, I'm going <laughs> to take every penny I have and start a music festival. Some people call you crazy. 
<laughs> yes, I was. I was called crazy by quite a few. <laughs> it's rare that you find a music festival and a freedom rally mixed together. Yes. How did right. that? Can you tell me about that combination? Well, like I said, I've been a vendor for you know, between 20 to 25 years, and I've seen a lot of different concerts. And it's it, it's about freedom, freedom of expression, and being able to do what you want to do and not have people giving you a hard time. Um, yeah, I mean, I, freedom, freedom to smoke marijuana if you want to, you know. It should be a freedom. Well, at the end of the day, you know, you own your body. You know, you own your body. You get to decide what you get to put in it. Um, I love the fact that, like, not only is this a music festival, it's also promoting freedom. It's promoting getting legalization. It's promoting like changing, you know, the the status quo that uh, we're not criminals. I like that not, it's uh, not one or the other though. Like, I like that I can sit and I can protest yeah. prohibition. I can hear powerful speakers. I can get high while listening to them and then jam out. A little out. bit from Tom uh, Brown. Now I want to hear a little bit from Rick Naya. Who are you? What are you all about, man? I'm a cannabis activist, and I like to work uh, in lobby. Concord, and I try to bring a voice uh, to the ordinary person in New Hampshire uh, for those of us that uh, don't have the time or maybe the experience in the diplomacy to work with the state mm -hmm. reps and have that uh, the background to do that. So I kind of brought a little bit of my background from my family into the uh, the cannabis, keeping the community together, this bond, this love, this this a hand to reach out between the aisles, so to speak. And I think that's where I came into play. Uh, I just realized that one day Tom called me again and said, please, man, I need your help. We're like three months away from Hempfest. And uh, things just so happened to come and I decided, okay, Tom, I'm gonna give you a commitment. Uh, well, this nonprofit is grassroots. We don't make any money. It's, it's, it's all out of pocket. And it, when Tom says that uh, he gave his life savings, it's, it's more than just that. our grassroots. Uh, if they only knew what it was like to try to uh, put on an event that we do here in New Hampshire to educate not only the, the, the state house, to educate the community, to bring them together to, 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 in a, an environment that's not just about, you know, cannabis. There's so much more than just that. Uh, it's the family, it's the voters, it's a voting block in New Hampshire that's uh, a lot more than uh, what the common people see. It's 62 percent of our state. And who's really representing those 62% is probably like 10 or 15 people in the state. And yeah. I just so happen to be one of those crusaders to help grab that banner. So our event, Hampshire Hempfest, really is a culmination of everybody's lives together. Yours here at Rebel Love Show. Hi, my name's Richard Naya. I'm uh, here with the uh, East Coast uh, uh, Unity Cypher and the East Coast Cannabis Coalition, New Hampshire Hemp Fest and Freedom Rally, New Hampshire Normal, and all of the citizens of New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, and New England. We're gathered today in front of the State House of uh, New Hampshire here in Concord, and we're celebrating the Unity Cypher, uh, which is a representation of unity of cannabis, cannabis uh, solidarity and uh, unity uh, of uh, le legalization and uh, that therefore a medical and uh, recreational and we've all gathered here today to, to bring unity here uh, in the state and within friends and family and uh, we're passing the love and sharing that love and uh, bringing awareness uh, to the type of laws that we have and we're trying to change those in a, in a, a, a nice way and, a, and at our event at New Hampshire Hemp Fest and Freedom Rally uh, we're inviting everybody to come out there so you can see what it's like to associate with those of us in the cannabis industry, our families and our friends and uh, we're, we're just really glad to be here. That's what this is all about. Family, friends and love. Everybody, please, everybody join us at New Hampshire Hemp Fest and Freedom Rally. You'll see, you'll see 10 House of Representatives, Senator Prospects, and, gen and governors as well that will be coming by. We have reps from all over the country to educate. Just come down and learn what it's about to be with family and to be know that our votes count. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move up to the steps of the State House now. And I uh, have a ceremonial here 
rallying today for freedom. It is time for the government to end its senseless civil war that it has been waging against us. Inoffensive people, people who harm no one. No government has a right to go to war with its own population. I became an activist because my wife died of cancer in 2002 without the benefit of medical marijuana and with the hindrance of the government at every step of her medical care. A person has the right to save their own life yes. by any means necessary. Your body, your health, your life belong to you. Who is voting these laws down? We need a governor. We need senators. We keep passing it here, but those two are screwing everything up. So that's where you guys get involved. Find out who's doing this and vote them the hell out. Out! Vote them out! I will like the 420 Foundation, and you guys all go like Frank Edelblue for governor. Right on. So I have been quite transparent about my decrim position. So what we've done is we've just taken, you know, a simple plant and we've made it, you know, unaccessible to the people. Um, and we need to just move beyond that. We've tried so many times. We've passed, you know, medicinal marijuana here in the state, and we haven't got it implemented. So where is the governor on this? Why is she not making this stuff available? You know, we have passed decriminalization. Joe, how many times we do that? At eight least, times. at least eight. Eight times, you know, and we just keep getting shut down. So I will pass that bill if I get elected governor. Goodbye. So what's, this, what's that plant for, Rick? That plant is for the 
the uh, girl, uh, what do you call that thing? It's a bouquet. We're gonna make, oh, you're gonna make a bouquet, bouquet. And maybe put some flowers in your little thing. Yes! Yeah, what do you call that now thing? Now that I have all the flower it? crown. Your crown, her crown. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna add some cannabis sleeves to the crown. Like, look yeah. at that. What like, a <laughs> present, huh? Everywhere, yes, yes. No oh one's gonna God. believe that. No. Nobody. 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 <laughs> Only Rick Naya. <laughs> what, what do you think of this view of Rogers? I think this view is beautiful. Like, I think I can't. I can't wait to see the stage right over there, and like having like at night, like seeing this with the stars coming up over the mountains. And then the mountains. And the mountains. Oh, I'm hoping it's clear skies the whole time. Yeah, me too. Dude. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be great. This is gonna be beautiful. Like, look at that. That's. I mean, th th this whole out. view, mountain view range here, is absolutely incredible. Oh man, this is forever. It's like New Hampshire. New Hampshire's a beautiful state. Some of these awesome. Yeah. Fucking views. So beautiful. He's one of the most energetic, heartfelt people you ever will meet, and he will make you cry. I want to thank everybody for being here and supporting us. Um, I also want to take a, a minute to uh, thank Tom uh, for having a vision of letting go uh, uh, of his own passion and giving it back and it takes a lot to, uh, to give and this year's theme love and giving really means a lot to us uh, Tom and I have really sacrificed a lot throughout the past couple years together a lot of you may know and some of you may not a lot of you know what it's like to jump on the, the backpack and climb on and know what it's like to grow like this and share this love and give it and I want you to know what we do all year long isn't just showing up here because we work our asses off at the state house level. <laughs> I don't know about Tom, he's always sleeping. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I know what I do all year long for all of us. So while all of us are here doing what we're doing, partying, getting our shindig on, getting our game faces on, getting fucked up, doing what we do and enjoying ourselves, let's just remember the love and the giving that we're giving to one another. We have a lot of dignitaries that are going to be here this week. Governor elects, congressmen, senators, house representatives. So you guys have to understand, in the last three years, we went from a mud puddle to a back of an RP place to the best that New England has to offer. Not me, not me, not Tom, not anyone specifically, all of us. So remember, while we're here, and you're carrying our lanyard, or you're carrying your, your love to give, Remember that we're not just giving it to each other, we're giving it to our state. We're giving it to the region of New England and the nation. We're setting an example. So remember, what we're doing here this weekend is all about you guys, the love and the giving. It's all about all of us. And I want to thank all of you from the you know bottom what I mean, of my you heart. Guys, it's all of us. It has something to do with everybody. So from the bottom of my heart, my deaf friends and my family, all of you guys, let's kick some fucking ass this weekend, all right, man? <laughs> festival and, and and you know look at the art and the body painting and everything but we're here to help change the laws in the United States not just New Hampshire in the whole United States of America exactly America. And, you know it, there's a lot of things that go on that 
are crazy. One, one example is the pharmaceutical industry spent $213 million in 2012 lobbying to keep cannabis, medical cannabis, and recreational illegal. $213 million in one year. What does that tell you? They're afraid. You know what I'm saying? They're afraid. You know, if you, if you get hurt and you go to a doctor, okay, they give you a pain pill, that's fine, but they don't look for a natural cure. Okay? If you take the four states right now where recreational marijuana is legal, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Oregon, right, that too, there you go. The four states where it's legal, people are getting their medicine. The sale of over counter opiates are down 20 to 50%. What is that time? They're losing billions of dollars. Not millions, billions. So they're, they're losing, but it's, it's not going to be an easy fight. Yeah, well. The federal government has not taken marijuana off its Schedule 1 drug, which is ridiculous because it has so many medical benefits. But people gathering and rallying together like this, because this is a freedom rally, we can change the laws not only in New Hampshire but in the rest of the world. We have the power to do this. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not we happening overnight. Power. But it's going to take a lot of work exactly. this weekend. We have a bake off today. I mean, this weekend. We have our very first Freedom Cup. Yeah! yeah. done in New Hampshire. This weekend we're going to have one of the largest weddings in New Hampshire's history as well. sort of pre-Hempfest edition. We're uh, live at Rogers Campground, and you can join us here uh, via the phones. We don't have Skype tonight because we're here. Naya is with us, one of the organizers of uh, the New Hampshire Hempfest, one of the top 10 Hempfests in the United States, and it's moved to a great location here, so beautiful to be at Rogers Campground. I'm, I'm, I've been talking about legalization of uh, cannabis here in New Hampshire and all around the country. Of course, we're learning from Colorado and Washington and California what not to do, how not to do uh, legalization. We want to take it, you know, like you said, Rick, off the books entirely, but that would be hard to pull off with politicians. They're going to want something out of this. Right, right, right. right. I, I agree. And, and I think in, in common sense, and. and we just can't let it all go like that. They're not going to. That's why the FDA and the uh, DEA are doing what they're doing and not allowing a reschedule yet. Ridiculous. Uh, they're going to allow for some studies, which they already have, which which all the other states that have already legalized and decriminalized. But let's get back to the topic uh, that Daryl had brought up. That what we what what changes? What could we do in the state to um, to make it a, a legal process? Now. I think there's going to be three options that we're going to have. One, the state's going to try and control it, just like they do alcohol. Boo. That's going to go hands down, and everybody's going to say no. The number two option I believe is going to happen is there's going to be a, a regulatory board with a commissioner to set up rules and regulations for home growers, for the medicinal industry, agriculture, and then, as I had mentioned earlier to you, it, uh, recreational. The sciences, recreational adult. That's all common sense adult uh, legalization thoughts. But what I, what I, my essence, uh, let me get to number three. Let's go to three. And then number three will be a, like a full legalization. Like legalize it, leave it alone, let, them, let whoever grow, whatever they want to grow, or regulate, hey, you can grow 20 plants at home. Uh, if you're going to grow outdoors on so much acres, this many plants. If you're going to grow on you know, 500 acres, you can grow that. So the, 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 the just of it all for New Hampshire, I think if we did just regulate it, to some degree at the home level and the industry level, we'll be able to come out of this with an economic windfall for education, students, insurances, banking, agriculture, technologies. There's so many different things that can be done with cannabis in our state that it's a windfall win for us. We're an educated state, but we are the best in the nation. So by allowing our children to tap in educatively, to teach the politicians and the policing and the courts that what we've done is wrong, let's turn this around and change it, 
I think that our state would be even better off if we allow New Hampshire's ingenuity, our happiness, and our, and our compassion to work. I think we'll come out on top in the nation, especially in New England. Nobody set the tempo yet. We still have a chance to take it. Yep. So like you said, can't we be first? I believe in that. I would love us to be first. I don't see why we could not. And it takes determination of will and the face of adversity in front of those hundreds of House representatives, right. those senators, to help believe. And that's why this event has grown so quickly. They believe in us. They believe in me. They believe you believe in me. I wouldn't be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. We wouldn't be here without you. you Normally believe. we charge several thousand People dollars believe. for the remote, so we're well, There's a Thank lot you. of belief. Sometimes, like my mother said, when things get bad and you feel like they're running out of town, Diggy, Grab a banner, a drum, and a trombone and make a parade out of it. You don't take flack unless you're over the target. Well, right. guess who's over the target? Exit. My name is Jordan Page. It's great to be here at New Hampshire Hemp Fest! I consider myself, among many other things, a cannabis freedom activist. I travel all over the country singing about freedom, singing about people's rights to do what the hell they want to do with their bodies. The same groups of psychopaths that try to keep cannabis illegal to keep us from healing ourselves and from connecting to each other are the same people that perpetrate atrocities all over the world. These are the people that I've dedicated my life to educating my brothers and sisters about all their shenanigans. Because until we're all enlightened, until we all wake up to this fact, nothing's ever gonna change. Money is power, and there's a disturbing amount of money to be made through cannabis prohibition at every angle. Everyone has heard the term the war on drugs. We've all heard this term over and over again. This is a war on individual liberty, and its primary antagonists are the criminal elements who profit by harvesting our natural God-given freedoms. If you want to understand any criminal enterprise, follow the money and the lies. I'm going to tell you a name, I don't want you to forget it. Harry J. Anslinger. Anybody ever heard this name before? A couple of you have. He was the first director of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics in 1930, and he realized he could grow this agency exponentially by demonizing cannabis, using racism and wild outlandish propaganda to create fear in the American public. I'm gonna give you a couple of his really, really, you know, of his best quotes. There are 100,000 total marijuana smokers in the U.S. Most are Negroes, Hispanics, Filipinos, and entertainers. The satanic music, jazz, and swing result from marijuana use. The marijuana causes white women to seek sexual relations with Negroes, entertainers, and others. The primary reason to outlaw marijuana is its effect on the degenerate races. Marijuana is an addictive drug which produces and its uses insanity, criminality, and death. Marijuana is the most violence-causing drug in the history of mankind. <laughs> Harry J. Anslinger, everybody. So he teams up with William Randolph Hearst, who owned a chain of newspapers, and he saw hemp as a dangerous threat to his business. And he had, substan and he had substantial investment in the timber industry. He used his influence through newspapers to distribute lies and turn the public against cannabis. These two sons of bitches then joined forces with DuPont Chemical, who had invented Nylon, another hemp competitor, and other pharmaceutical companies to pass the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which paved the way for cannabis to become illegal at the federal level. After that, an all-out culture war was waged on cannabis through news media, schools, churches, and films, which led to the Controlled Substance Act of 1970, designating cannabis as a Schedule One drug. Project. 
guess some of you have heard of us. We've managed to legalize marijuana in a few states, working hard to bring that to New England. It will be on the ballot for those of you who live in Massachusetts and Maine. Don't have to go through the politicians in those states. We can just put it on the ballot and have people vote for it. In states like New Hampshire and Vermont, we have got to go through the legislative process if we want to change marijuana laws. The House has now passed decrim eight times in New Hampshire. Eight times they sent bills to the Senate and they hit the brick wall and they die. In part because we have a governor who says, oh, I'll veto that if it comes to my desk. We've got two governors in a row that have really sucked on marijuana policy and have basically sided with the Police Chiefs Association on everything that matters. And this year we have an opportunity. There is an open election for governor. On the Democratic side, that's Steve Marchand. He's the Ports May former mayor of Portsmouth. He strongly supports legalization. He's been going around the country, or around the state, saying we need to legalize marijuana. And on the Republican side, if you're a Republican voter, we've endorsed Frank Adelblue. I think he'll be here tomorrow or Saturday, is it? One of those days, Frank will be here himself, so you can meet him. Please do look at our voter guide if you are a New Hampshire voter. Find out which politicians think you belong in jail for your lifestyle choices, and find out which ones don't, and I'll leave it to you to decide who to support.
What are you guys doing here at New Hampshire Hemp Fest and Freedom Rally? Well, I'm going to go walk through the campground and introduce myself to New Hampshire voters and hopefully generate some votes for Frank Adelblue for governor. And as a supporter of Frank, we're very happy to have him at the uh, New Hampshire Hemp Fest and Freedom Rally 2016. And you're a supporter of uh, any prohibition here in uh, New Hampshire? Yes, yeah, so, um, absolutely. Decriminalization of marijuana, I think, is a smart thing to do. We need law enforcement resources focused on you know, more important issues in the state, and there's just a moral issue when we tag people with a criminal record uh, as a result of possession of a small amounts of marijuana, and they have to wear that you know, badge for the rest of their lives, and that's just that's wrong, and we need to fix that. We're a national headliner, and we're a, we're a psychedelic bluegrass band from the hinterlands of West Virginia and Virginia and Maryland. And we're here because we know Dougie and Tom, and they had a good thing going. And we need to we need to decriminalize our people. Is the main thing. We're not bad people, we're good people, and we do good works. And we're generous and kind, and we give back. And we just don't want to be the bad guy. I'm Representative Glenn Aldrich. Uh, I represent Guilford and Meredith, and I came here to speak uh, about cannabis. New Hampshire is the only legislative body that has passed legalization. Everywhere else, it has been by, uh, what do they call it, uh, ballot initiative. So the legislators actually passed it, but the Senate wouldn't take it up because the governor said she'd veto it, so they, that gave them an easy out, and that's what they took. What's your vision for uh, can the cannabis industry and legalization in New Hampshire? What do you want to see? I, all I want to see is people being left alone to do what they want to do. If you can make money from it, fine. If you want to grow some, fine. You can be a farmer, John. Uh, farmer, you know, uh, I don't care. But I think it's ridiculous in this day and age, after all this many years on the war on drugs, and what Anzeiger started this in what, about 36? I mean, it's ridiculous that we're still pressing this issue, stigmatizing young people with a drug conviction and then want to kick them off of welfare when they can't get a job. together, figure out who our people are and what we believe in and vote for like-minded people and put them in office and hold the ones that are in office to bear, to accountability, or this shit will continue to happen. It's up to you as an activist to get involved, to get someone involved. You know, I personally am a victim of the drug war, and you know, I don't want to continue on about how bad it used to be. I know it can be better, I know we can do better, and I challenge you as an activist to get out there and carry that message to that, li that liberal, that conservative, that person, because that, the, you know, as a pipe salesman, the one thing I did learn about selling pipes for 33 years all over the United States was, everybody smokes pot. I sold pipes to grandmas, I sold pipes to conservatives, I sold pipes to cops, I sold pipes to everybody. You know why? Because everybody smokes pot. And the reason big law enforcement doesn't want it legal is so they don't have to buy the product. And then I guess they can grow pot or I don't know what's going on there. 
But I would like to tell those guys, I could give them a tutorial on how to grow marijuana, and then they wouldn't have to rob mine. Right? So, hey, listen. Listen. Things will change if you get involved. So be the change you want to see. Find like-minded people, stick together, and we can make this change happen. with Rick and I and Frank Edelwoot. Uh Why you guys are here, what's going on, why are you in at New Hampshire uh, Hemp Fest, uh, Frank? I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to come so that I could meet individuals in New Hampshire who care about freedom, who care about the 21st century and moving into the 21st century, who care about marijuana, and he thought it was important that I get to hear directly from them. And so I've been wandering through the campsites, introducing myself to folks, uh, listening to them, trying to understand what's important to them, and it's been a great experience. It's exactly as I expected it to be. Just great people, you know, very friendly, you know, open to talking, sharing ideas with me. I mean, these people have a lot of good ideas about, you know, policy and public policy in New Hampshire, and so I think we need to make sure that we include all of those voices in the conversation here in New Hampshire. I have high hopes that we can get decriminalization done in New Hampshire, and there's really two reasons why we need to go down this path. First, you know, we do not need to distract law enforcement from more pressing and urgent matters in our communities uh, by having them chase down, you know, marijuana. And the second is, I think there's a moral issue here as well. You know, when individuals find themselves arrested for small amounts of marijuana and then they get tagged with a criminal record, that stays with them the rest of their lives and make it, makes it difficult for them to really access the economy and to, uh, you know, and it's just not right. It's a moral issue. We need to work on that. Uh, we've watched the nation do a number of different things, and I think Frank's ideas uh, with decriminalizing first, watching how this progresses, and working it into the economy. We're very proud and honored to be able to use Rogers Campground, our state, as a platform for Frank and all of our citizens to move forward in a manner that's going to help us and, 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 and not only society but the humanity of it all. We need to make these changes and I believe in Frank and, and that's why we're here to help support these changes. I gotta say one thing and leaving it on a note that our theme this year of love and giving is really starting to take hold and I'm beginning to sense it more as the day goes by as our staff and volunteers come together and cohese more. Rick. I gotta know your voice, man. Your voice is so low right now. Am I gonna have to replace you for the love sermon tomorrow? Are you gonna no, be able to? Are you gonna be able to handle it? Yeah, well, we're gonna have a microphone, so that should help me. <laughs> but remember, I talk to thousands upon thousands of people. I can't stop my uh, golf cart without having a swarm of people come over to say hi and say hello and share the love.
having a friend come up and say some things because uh, he's a great dude. One of the volunteer coordinators. Yeah. Amy, you want to say something about him? Oh, I do. Yeah. Are you guys ready for pigeon play ping pong? Yeah. All right, I just got one important thing I got to do before they start. And that involves me inviting my beautiful girlfriend up.
All right, so we just left his motel room right up there. Okay. Uh, apparently, he has one hour of sleep, and he could barely he he could barely speak. His uh, voice is so gone. I'm worried. We would have got like. What was it three hours ago? Three hours ago, and uh, I'm gonna get married right over there. He's gonna post, he's supposed to do the love sermon. I'm hoping he's gonna have everyone crying in the field because I know that's gonna happen. He's gonna cry. He's probably gonna cry at least five times. Probably five, maybe. I don't know if he, he's gonna cry more than he's gonna be able to talk. I know that for sure. I know, he's, he's quite the crier. <laughs> yeah, he is quite the crier. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, so it's in a couple hours. I'm gonna go get ready. Uh, the groups are gonna get ready. Ed's already getting ready. We already scoped up the site. I can't wait. So. All right. It's just so surreal. Like everything is built up to this moment. Like. Fast being here at Rogers because like for those that don't know I proposed to Ann well over in that field in the main field uh, where the staff meeting was earlier uh, in the week that's where I proposed to her at a different festival and now we're back here it's a whole full circle moment in my life uh, it's, it's a little surreal just walk like to me this is like holy ground at Rogers like I've had so many memories here so it's, it's very very surreal to have this moment happen here To recap the discussion we had earlier, now that the moment is getting closer, how do you feel? It's, I'm still thinking, it, man. Right now, I'm just focused on getting these tapestries out. I want to make this look beautiful. I can't wait to see what this uh, entire, you know, the spiritual moment that we're going to create right here, uh, the circle moment of life. How are you feeling right now? Feeling really anxious and excited. Once I put my dress on, I'll be like. But I've done, I've smoked like a lot of joints, so I'm feeling pretty good. Good. On I a, just need my monster energy drink. So. On a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how would you say you're nervous? Um, I'm nervous you. <laughs> probably like a 15. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't usually get nervous, but I'm nervous. But hey, I'm also nervous. just excited, so I know everything's going to be good. What else can go right? How do you feel? It's getting intense. I'm trying to pace myself. I don't want to get completely done and then like chill around for a long time. But at the same time, I'm joins and like to get all suited up and ready to go. Uh, but that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of killing time. Uh, but the energy's in the air. I, I can feel like the moment upon us. I'm just trying to take as much of it in as I can. You only get this moment once. You only get this moment. You're an hour away. Wow. What's on your What's What's on your mind? I'm still ready to put on my dress. Feeling a bit more pretty. I'm still gonna braid my hair. I love the braids, like they're so tribal. It just takes you right back to nature. I love it. Um, I wanna put braids in everything. And I'll just be intertwined. But I'm excited. Nice. on your mind what's on my mind I just want this to go off without a hitch right now like, I, I just want this to be as beautiful as possible so I'm just hoping I don't cry too much I, I know I'm gonna cry so I hope I don't cry I hope I can actually go through my battles like and not like you know like stumble that's like my, my only nervousness right now great I just drove by right here right now, the director of this festival, uh, not trust. He's bringing flowers to Anne right now, which is at our campsite for her uh, flower crown. Um, but like we're running way behind schedule. It's already like 1245 and we're, that's still all going on. He's not interested. He's supposed to be giving the sermon out here. So I'm a little worried, a little worried, but I'm sure it'll all come together. It'll, 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 it'll come to part. I 
hot then take it some time, I need to shake it off. I'm using all the way to a cross and that's a no no, baby, won't you take this photo? Baby, won't you take me home? Take me. I said, darling, won't you take me home? Yeah, take me. Baby, won't you take me home? This home is not a place, it's a state of mind. Darling, don't worry, baby, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Color in your cheeks Do you ever get that feel That you can't shift the tide That sticks around like Summer's in your teeth Are there some aces up your sleeve Have you no idea that you're in deep I dreamt about you nearly Every night this week How many secrets can you keep Cause there's this tune I found that makes me think of you somehow And I play it on repeat Until I fall asleep Spilling drinks on my settee Do I wanna know If this feeling flows I learned a lot from Robin Hanna They've opened up their hearts to me as I have with them. We've shared meals together, tears of laughter. We've held hands in trying times. I just want to say that today is a very special day, not only for me, but for Rob and Ann. Again, a commitment is made to be fulfilled between the couple. But a commitment can't be bound and honored without those of us that surround them. And I'd like to take today and make a piece of history to last forever and join Robin in what I call a holy commitment. Holy to themselves as one unto another. Sharing love for oneself is a grand thing in life. You gotta be happy for yourself. You can't love anybody if you can't love yourself. And a lot of times in life we lose track of who we really are Loving one another and watching them love one another and grow has made me grow. As a human being, a father, let's take a solemn moment while they give their vows and take an opportunity to reflect on our lives and what we've done, where we've gone, what we're willing to accomplish, and what sacrifices we have to make to get there. But together, as a family, as they are, so many more obstacles can be accomplished and overcome as a team than individually. And knowing themselves and loving themselves, they're able to love one another that way and give that commitment. So please, let's, let's give them a chance and just bring their hands together. Let them share their vows together. Let's bring some of my dearest friends together in, in their matrimony, in nature, and in love. Thank you. Here we stand. Just one year later, after I proposed to you over that main field, on this very campground, in front of all of our closest friends. In that time, years, years have flown by. We've gone on adventures that took us hiking multiple mountains to hitting festivals, including this festival last year, to uh, living in the Green Mountains with the Rainbow Family Gathering.
Loving you. Loving you. Loving you. <laughs> Both of us are immigrants of this far off land, searching for not just love, but for life. Neither of us accepting just existence. Both of us striving to live in the now. We recognize we are aware. We put value in the fact that life is an adventure meant to be lived. Throughout our adventures of life, two things have remained steadfast. The love we have for each other, uh, this evolutionary journey the two of us are on. The love we have has transcended everything I thought was impossible. It's pushed me both of us to grow tremendously because there's no barriers between us. We have grown in such a short amount of time. I love watching our progression, never knowing who will it be in just a few months? I ought to feel like I'm in heaven around you. You're the most caring, loving, positive, supportive person I've ever known. I treasure the moments we, uh, where we get to just be in each other's arms. Every night we cuddle to sleep, but every morning I wait, I wait to the last possible moment to get out of bed. I rarely ever dream. But that's because life, life with you is like a dream come true. With all of our family here today, and everyone here is our family, about to be there to help you on our, on our journey, to catch you when you fall. About to be there to raise our kids, to show them love and happiness, to grow our family. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, You'll be an amazing Earth Mother. Oh, God. I vow to be the greatest father to our kids I can be. I vow to be your husband. I vow to be your partner in life. No matter what happens, I vow to be on this journey with you forever and ever. <laughs> Every day we take action to show our love. Our gathering today with all our friends and family is an act of love. And from this essence comes forth wisdom, beauty, playfulness, spaciousness, ability, creativity, pleasure, happiness, passion, and aliveness. Robert Matthias, I want to spend every day from now until eternity has caught up with us loving you. And then move on to loving you in a higher plane of existence and consciousness. Our forever is infinite, and I'm excited for every day of it. Transcendence, detachment, bliss, and the way to ultimate liberation. Silent, eternal, the consciousness that dwells beyond time and beyond death. In the eternal now, witnessing all experience and embracing all of life as expressions of the divine. And in us, I see these traits of love and think this ancient love story tells me that our love specifically is meant to be, and there is no other explanation. For, th for though we are young, this kind of love we share is as ancient as time. We are on a unique journey. This is our living love story, building a beautiful history we will share with our little seeds one day. It is as if we have transcended and we've fallen through time and landed here together and I could live in our memory forever and ever. When I am with you, I have no fear. And it's not because I know you will protect me, but it's because fear is derived from the unknown. And when it comes to us, there is one thing I know and that is that you love me. You show me every day, opening the car door, telling me how pretty I am, uh, to working hard and providing for our family. Thank you for supporting me through all the bad times and being my partner in crime for all the good times. Thank you for being my family. I do not know if I can live without you, but I don't ever want to. This is why every day I am thankful to wake up next to you, to be wrapped in your arms, a place where time ceases to exist. And there is just skin, and there is nothing, yet everything in those moments. I love you with all my heart, and I trust you with all my heart. So there is no unknown, and there is no fear. Today is a particular day of significance. As we stand here and vow to love, we move forward with clear vision, yet we are willing to trust and flow with whatever, comes, with, with, with whatever life brings us. From this place, we have created a more harmonious relationship. 
and added more joy into our lives. We have ended a cycle and started anew. And no matter what's next, I'm ready because I'm with you. And I know that we will always be together through space and time. You are part of my heart. You've soothed my spirit and I love you infinitely. I am so happy to call you my husband and I am so happy to be your wife.
up close if you want one of our joints. Should we roll for today's Freedom Cup? The splendors of today's harvest. Well, man, some joints. There's probably 12 different varieties in here. Wow. Yeah. Talk about the salad from heaven. I love you, brother. Sent from heaven. I love you. days, possession of small amounts of marijuana will no longer be a misdemeanor in New Hampshire. Today, Governor Sununu signed a bill decriminalizing possession of up to three quarters of an ounce, a violation with a top fine of $100 for a first or second offense. That's the sativa. That is the sativa. Strawberry pop. That's the strawberry sauce. You can bust five, bro. Yeah, that was my strawberry sauce. That's the key. This is a hybrid, I mean. That's what you want? Diesel kush.
met these guys backstage this year with Twiddle jamming out, fucking having a great time. They blasted out all these killer blunts. And we hooked up and they passed me a bunch of hooch and I said, look, I want to invite you guys to my Freedom Cup, the first ever. You guys might win with this shit. They go, yeah, dude, we got more. We'll show you, man. So they came and they cleaned up the house, man. So my boys, my friends, my growers, man, they came through. They won in all, man, all of them. They won the Indica, they won the Overall Cup, they won the Hybrid Cup. I'm really proud of the Sativa Cup. I I'm stoked right now. I don't even know what to say, man. to join us uh, the fight for freedom really I mean it's just that simple you know, we should have the freedom to do what we want with our bodies or anything until we infringe on the rights of somebody else disobedient. It makes me very proud to stand up along all these people and, and, and be civilly disobedient. It's almost daring the state and the police and whomever to come arrest us all. Humiliate yourselves. The answer isn't in who gives what how much they give, how much they got, who slides in last with the most toys, who's the best looking and got hair and teeth when they die. That's how we can bring each other together in a unity of love and understanding and forgiveness 